Good morning, Faith Baptist Church family. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I apologize. It looks like I was posting on my own personal page there, and I meant to post it in here in the, uh, in the church group page. So you got to love technology, I tell you. But uh, happy Resurrection Sunday. I uh, kind of mentioned these prayer requests and these uh, announcements earlier, but I'll kind of reiterate them since uh, some of you may not have heard. But uh, happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Easter to all of you. We are looking forward to a wonderful day serving our risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, um, I want to mention a couple of uh, uh, prayer requests as well as uh, some announcements that are coming up this week. Uh, many of you maybe have heard, but uh, Wendy Mason's mother has passed away, and uh, she, she let us know uh, this morning. And uh, be praying for Miss Wendy Mason as she's going through this time of loss. And um, pray for uh, God's strength and um, his comfort. Uh, we're praying that uh, God would uh, comfort her. She has the hope of the resurrection in her life. She knows that her mother is, is no longer um, in pain, but she is with Jesus. Uh, scripture promises to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And um, we're just uh, continuing to pray for her. So um, also a couple announcements that I want to make. Uh, that are coming up this week. Um, of course, uh, this Wednesday night, we started doing our Wednesday night Bible studies right here in our church Facebook group page. Um, and uh, that's at seven o'clock. I really encourage you, if you're able, to tune in. And uh, we take the pet message from Pastor's Message uh, and we write some questions and we seek to answer those and to learn more and apply the scripture uh, each, uh, each Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Also, um, really uh, want to uh, encourage you between this message and Pastor's Message at eleven o'clock, we're going to be um, posting a uh, dramatic presentation of the gospel story, the Easter story, right at 1045. I encourage you to tune in right at 1045. And um, uh, Pastor, or we have a video that uh, will give us the uh, gospel presentation, and I encourage you to watch that. It's about six minutes long. All right. Well, I encourage you, if you have your Bibles, to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 15, and uh, we're going to be in uh, verse number 12 uh, and through 20 this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to preach a message called the good news of the resurrection, the good news of the resurrection. Uh, I apologize if you're tuning in for the second time. I've already read the text of scripture, but I'm going to do it again uh, if you're just tuning in now. So uh, forgive us as, as I uh, figure out the technology here in my own life. So <laughs> good stuff. Uh, 1 Corinthians, we're going to begin in verse number one. And uh, Paul the Apostle, speaking to the church of Corinth, is going to uh, encourage them and to re-inspire them with, with the gospel, the good news of the gospel. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number one says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which ye have received, and wherein ye stand. He says, this good news, this gospel is what you've heard preached, and this is what you're trusting in. He says, you are saved if you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. He says, I, I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Paul the apostle wanted the church of Corinth to be reminded of this good news, the good news that Jesus Christ, he came to this earth, lived a perfect life. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and that he rose again the third day. And it's because of that good news that we ourselves can experience everlasting life through the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to have a word of prayer right now, and then we're going to jump into this message that I've called the good news of the resurrection. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the Resurrection Sunday. We thank you that you are the a risen Savior. We thank you, Father, for sending your Son, the Lord Jesus, to this earth to live the life that we could not live, to die the death that we should have died ourselves, that we rightfully deserved. But you, Father, took away that wrath from us and that you put it upon your son who endured the wrath of God on our behalf, was buried, three days later rose from the grave, and we have everlasting life through faith in Christ. Help us, Lord, to be encouraged and to be strengthened uh, through this message, the truth of the resurrection and this good news. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
I don't know about you, but right now it seems like anytime you turn on the news, um, it seems like all you get is bad news. I don't know if news companies uh, are just allergic to or they just don't like to uh, give good news. Maybe it, doesn't, maybe it doesn't sell or it doesn't get us to tune in. Perhaps that's the reason why. But I'll tell you what, in the last few weeks, the last month, our lives have been inundated with bad news. I have some good news. I have some great news for us that's not just good during a coronavirus outbreak. It's not just good during bad times in our life. The good news of the resurrection is good all day, every day for the rest of our lives. It is the good news that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came to this earth, died for your sins, died for my sins. He was buried. Three days later, he defeated death. He arose from the grave, bodily resurrected from the grave. And now he offers us everlasting life through his, him, himself and through the sacrifice on the cross, through his blood. This good news, this good news of the resurrection is something that Paul wanted the church of Corinth to be reminded of, and he wanted the church of Corinth to, to, to find their, their, their solid foundation in, in this truth. Paul the Apostle, in this passage of Scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in going on in verse number 12, he then asks a hypothetical or a rhetorical question. He says, hey, some of you are talking about the gospel. Some of you are talking about the resurrection as if it did not happen. So Paul poses this question. He says, hey, let's just imagine for a moment, although Paul's going to declare that the, the resurrection did indeed happen, but he says, let's pause and think about this for a moment. If Jesus Christ did not raise from the dead, bodily resurrect from the dead, what would be different in our lives? Have you ever thought to ask yourselves that question? If Jesus Christ had not risen from the grave, what would be different in our lives? Well, Paul seems to, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, give us an example or a picture of what that would look like. Paul the Apostle in verse number 12 says this, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? He says, hey, if Jesus Christ is risen, why is that I'm hearing that some are saying that he had not risen? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? He said, if resurrection cannot happen, Christ was not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain and our faith is also vain. Think about that. Paul the Apostle says, if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead, our preaching's vain, it's empty, it's worthless, and our faith is vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. In other words, it's not just that we're uh, trusting in something that's empty and vain and worthless. We're liars. That's what Paul would say if, if the resurrection had not happened. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up if so be that the dead rise not. So Paul the Apostle is saying, if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead, we are liars. We are not just liars. We're trusting in something that doesn't matter. And then he says this. He says, we're all men most miserable. He says, if, if, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. It's worthless. It's empty. And ye are yet in your sins. Then, also, then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, are perished. For in, if in this life, Paul the Apostle says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ. In other words, if, if our hope ends at the moment of death, we are of all men most miserable. He said, we're worse off. We're worse off than anybody because we're trusting in something that's not going to give us hope eternal. He says, we have a, we're living a lie if, if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead. But Paul does not leave us there. I want you to look at verse number 20. Verse number 20 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says this, But now is Christ risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of them that sleep. Paul the Apostle says, I want to ask this question. What would be different in your life? What would be different in my life if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead? Everything would be different. But he says, I want to declare to you that Jesus Christ is risen and he is the first fruits among those who believe and those uh, of those who have slept. I want us to give some good news. If, imagine if, if the gospel was, was a newspaper or headlines, and, and we're kind of used to right now seeing all these headlines. It seems like each headline gets worse and worse and worse. I think, I think news companies compete for the most dramatic way that they compose some of these headlines. But if we were to give some headlines of the gospel, I think the first headline that we would see today is because of the resurrection, because of the truth that we serve a risen Savior, we have a complete 
forgiveness. A complete forgiveness. I want you to stop and think that right now, because of Jesus Christ raising from the dead, we have total and complete forgiveness of our sins. Paul said if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead, we would still be in our sins. But because he has been delivered up, Romans chapter 4, verse 25, and he has been crucified for our offenses, he was raised up for our justification. The blood of Jesus Christ satisfied God's righteous demands, and the justification of our sin came from the bodily resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of of his grace. Because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we now have complete forgiveness from our sins. As far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed our sins from us. If you think about that, your sins from the past, the present, and the future are all under the blood of Christ, and they have been fully forgiven, justified, declared righteous, on one account, because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Christ and his defeat, his, his, him's defeating over death. And now we who are in Christ are, can also become the first fruits. He is the first fruits among many who would believe. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us, has borne us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Can I say the first good news I want us to hear today is that we have been completely, 100% forgiven. We have a complete forgiveness because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only do we have complete forgiveness, headline number two, so to speak, if we were to read the headline of the good news of the gospel, it would say this, we have a confident faith. It's not just that our sins have forgiven, it's what we're trusting in, our faith in the Lord Jesus. The, the faith that we have in Christ is one with confidence. It's a sure faith. Paul says this, he says, if we, if Christ had not risen from the dead, our preaching is vain and our faith is vain. If Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead, if Jesus Christ had not defeated death, if Jesus Christ was not a risen savior, the things that I'm saying right here, the, the words that we read right here would be worthless, would be empty, would be vain. But the truth is Jesus Christ is risen. He is alive. He is, uh, he is a, a risen savior. He sits on the right hand of the father. Jesus Christ, because he is raised from the dead, we have a confident faith. We can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can be confident that Jesus Christ, who began a good work in us, is going to perform it until the day that Jesus Christ returns. Can I say this? The, the faith that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ can be trusted because God is trustworthy. Jesus Christ said, I am the t same today, t uh, yesterday, and forever. The, word, the truth is, Jesus Christ will never let you down. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The faith that you have in Jesus is rock solid because he is our rock. He is our anchor. I encourage you on this Resurrection Sunday to praise the Lord for the faith that we have, the hope that we have in Christ and in Christ alone. Because of the resurrection, the truth is, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says this, I, you and I, are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The life that you and I live now as Christians is lived out by faith and faith in Christ and Christ alone. We not only have complete forgiveness in the Lord Jesus Christ because of the resurrection, the good news of the resurrection is not just complete forgiveness. It's not just that we have a confident faith. What we are trusting in is dependable. It is trustworthy. I want us to see, thirdly, we have a certain future. Paul the Apostle makes this argument. He says, hey, what would happen if Jesus Christ had not risen from the dead? We would have no certainty in our future. Matter of fact, Paul says, we would be among men most miserable. The truth is, if we are without Christ, if we are without the hope of the resurrection, we would not have a confident future. The truth is, because of the resurrection, we have a confident future. We have a certain future, and our hope is secure. Our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ is secure. The, Paul the Apostle says this, but now is Christ risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of them that sleep. We are, he is the first fruits. 
In other words, he gives us a, a beautiful picture or analogy or metaphor. It's as if you're going through a field and you taste that first ear of corn. If that ear of corn is good, the rest of the crop is going to be good. Jesus was the first among many. Jesus Christ paved the way. Because of his resurrection, we now have hope. We now have hope that one day Christ will come and he will give us new bodies. And we wait, and, and we wait for that day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 says this, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For if we have been planted together in, his, in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. The truth is, Christian friend, because of the resurrection, because of what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross in defeating death in the bodily resurrection three days after his death, we have confidence that to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. That there is no more condemnation. There is no, there is no fear of eternal punishment. That we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 20 says this. For our conversation, our citizenship, our life is in heaven. For we've been crucified with Christ. From, from whence also we look for our Savior, for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Christian, if you've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we have complete forgiveness of sin. We have a faith that can be trusted. It's a, it's a faith that's sure. And we have a hope, an eternal hope, that one day we will be with Jesus. All of the tears, all of the pain, all of this, this present sin that we feel in our lives will be gone and there will be a new heaven, a new earth, and we will live with Jesus eternally. And that doesn't just happen by happen chance. That happens because of the fact that Christ came and he died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. He was buried. Three days later, he rose from the grave, defeating death. Right now, we feel that sting of death. Matter of fact, if you think about what's going on in our culture today, each and every day, we hear of statistics of people dying from this coronavirus pandemic. And not just from this virus, but death is, is, is rampant all throughout this, this, this nation, this world, because of sin. We feel that sting right now, but Jesus Christ has power over that death. Let me, hear, let me read the last part of this passage of Scripture, 1 Corinthians 15. He says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? We feel it now, but Jesus Christ has power over it. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What does Paul then say? Because of the resurrection, because of what Jesus Christ has done, because we have forgiveness of sin, we have a faith that can be trusted, we have a hope that is secure for us for eternity. What does the last verse of 1 Corinthians say? What can we do now? What can we do now? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not vain in the Lord. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. I thank you so much for your goodness in our lives. I thank you that, God, you sent your son to this earth to, um, to purchase and to pay the penalty of our sins. We thank you that when he was hung on the cross, that he died the death that none of us can even imagine, but that he would not stay on that cross. He was buried and that he rose again three days later. And we thank you for the resurrection. We thank you for Easter Sunday. I pray, Jesus, that would be a time for us to worship you and to glorify you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.